Hey everyone and welcome to 121 in Flux, I'm Peter and that is Connor and we of course talk about movies, movies from the past, sometimes classic, sometimes B-movie, sometimes schlock, whatever, it just depends on how we feel. And on this episode we are covering something because a new version is about to hit, we are going to talk about Ghost in the Shell, the 1995 animated film from Japan, and of course the new American version is coming out next week, Skeleton starring... Scarring? Starring Scarlett Johansson. You see what I did there? I put Starring and Scarlett uh, together. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so that's coming next week. So neither of us had seen this, this original version. So we thought, what better time to go back and look at it, uh, talk about it. And obviously we're going to cover the new one next week when it comes yeah. out. So, yeah, why not? Why not look into it? So we will start spoiler-free and we will give some overall thoughts on it. Uh, before we go into spoilers, we'll give you some warning. The spoiler-free section, as with a lot of these old movies, will probably be shorter than maybe some of the new movies that come out because we feel like most people will probably have seen it because it is older. Yes. So, so we, we, you know, short spoiler-free section just in case there are some people who want to get a sense of it before we dive into like deep plot details. And uh, I'd just like to talk about uh, our backgrounds in general because Peter here is well known for despising anime in oh. general as a rule. Well known is a bit harsh, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's kind of a, it's kind of one of your things. Amongst people who know me, yes, I am not a fan of uh, anime. Now, when I say anime, I, I I typically think of series more than I do movies. That said, I did uh, watch Akira uh, once and thought it was insanely convoluted and could barely pay attention to it. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. It's not like I love all anime. I like some, dislike some, but. Just to uh, put that in there, just to so to see why I'm I'm intrigued to see how Peter found this. Hmm. Uh, I bet you're intrigued. You're, you're waiting yeah. for me to give my first impression, aren't you? You're, I, you're I mean, for... I, I know my impressions. You're you're waiting for that first sentence that lets you know how I felt about it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's very cagey with this one. <laughs> <laughs> because because like I say, Akira is this, the kind of thing where this sounds like it should be right up my alley. I love science fiction, obviously, and yeah. it, it, it sounds like something that should be into me, but. And yeah, for the first five minutes, I was like, oh, fancy bikes, they're going through the city, animation looks okay, and, like, and then it just starts going off the rails very quickly, and, and I lose and interest. Before we went into this, felt a similar way about Ghost in the Shell, I mean, the sci-fi, the core concepts, mm-hmm. they're things that should appeal to him. Uh, they absolutely should be. And even something like, uh, I watched the first like two episodes of Neon Genesis Evang- Evangelion. Evang- yeah. That was brave. I, th- I got so, it. Not, not trying to say it, trying to watching it. All right, yeah. Uh, I think they're both quite brave, but <laughs> and you know during the first episode I was like, why is it a penguin living in a fridge? I don't know, and th- that's kind of just what puts me away from it. Uh, so before I get to how I feel, just yes. what, what are your ge- what was your general feeling after watching Ghost in the Shell? I liked it a lot. I thought this was pretty great. Like, the, the the core themes that are explored are, th- are very appealing to me. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, the the idea of what what makes people human, it, it, it's, it's it's delving on air. Is there a soul? What what are we? Are we more than just the sum of our parts? And it, obviously, there's lots of movies that explore these themes. Some do it better than others, but I think this one did it pretty well. Well, it's called Ghost in the Shell, which is kind of what that phrase means. It's, exactly. Uh, a soul in the machine. It comes from a. Uh, uh, you know things like Deus Ex Machina, things like that. Like that, the idea is their feeling in the in the machine kind of thing. Yeah. Because uh, actually, I think that directly translates as ghost in the machine. Uh, this is obviously changed yeah. it slightly to ghost in the shell. Uh, but I, I guess that's to I think because of the way the film tackles it, it's kind of well, I don't want to say machine because the whole idea is that is it similar between machines and people. So shell yeah. kind of covers both. Like as a body, whether you're a human or a body, whether you're a machine. Any it's different. ultimately just a shell. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I liked it too. Oh, I was I was gearing up for an argument on this one. Uh, well, you see, I mean, I was worried. I was worried pretty much throughout the whole thing that at any point it was going to turn into everything I hate about anime. But it never it, did. And it never quite did. If I, it did some. Now, obviously, people who watch a lot of anime are going to scream at me and tell me in the comments that. What I'm about to say probably describes a lot of anime, and you know what? Maybe it does, but I'm not particularly willing to <laughs> to tread through those waters to find it. But 
w- one of the things that I appreciated about this, uh, obviously I like the themes, I like the, the core science fiction, AI, yeah. things that it's exploring, but is that it was not afraid to just slow down and give me a nice montage of a city while some music played. It was yeah. not afraid to go five minutes without a line of dialogue. And I feel like, typically whenever I've tried anything remotely anime before, and I'm not counting something like a Miyazaki film, those are very different. Those are very, a very different style to what I would... And I, I, technically they are anime, don't get me wrong, but the, when I talk about anime, I'm talking about series, typically. I'm talking about your... And what was the point I was getting at is most of the stuff I would consider anime, I would describe as having ADD, where it can't settle for more than two seconds and I, I get really agitated by that and it has the adverse effect on me where I get really bored because there's just yeah. it's just throwing things at me and I just nothing means anything I have a question obviously I know you said you like this but mm-hmm. the whole time you were obviously enjoying it with the threat of it being ruined at any moment <laughs> do, yeah do you think you'd enjoy it more on a rewatch knowing that you can you're safe without having that and you can properly uh, relax and, and get into it i hadn't thought about that that's maybe a good uh, question uh maybe maybe hmm. uh because i i think i mean it's a cyberpunk story i like cyberpunk yeah. it's yeah. uh got got your neon lights of the city and all that kind of throughout i like the music a lot I had, I had a good I the music was it. great yeah yeah it's, it's got that sort of uh, a choir, sort of haunting choir esque singing going on in the main yeah. sort of track, and then you got your your piano style synths, kind of the yeah. soft ones of the pads, and you've got that throughout that gives it a nice a nice texture, and uh, and also I do like two D animation. It's something you don't get to see a lot of anymore because even like even like the modern DC animated movies, which are two D, and funnily enough, one of the arguments that some people have about those is that they are starting to look more too you know too anime esque. But yeah. my, my complaints with them is, A, yeah, I don't think the anime style suits them because of the characters they are, but also they just feel too clean. I actually kind of like how how gritty this feels. Yeah, those DC ones, they're 2D, but they still feel like done in a computer. This feels hand-drawn. Yeah, it's too much sheen. It's too, just too clinical feeling, whereas this, it, you know, there's, there's, there's life to it. There's, there's stuff going on. Uh, yeah. I like that. And as much as I'm not a huge fan of the anime style when it comes to faces... I'm not, I'm not. I'm not super into the pointy chins and the. Yeah, that's just uh, a stylistic thing, isn't it? Yeah, I do quite like the. At least in this movie, I like the the backgrounds, the city, the way the city mm, looks. I think is very definitely. nice. Uh, yeah, it's very reminiscent to me of like a PlayStation One uh, pre-rendered background, which is something I have a great many fondness for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's from the same sort of time. It is 1995. So it's right in that that sort of era. So. No, that's that's what I like in terms of the 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 animation there. And I, what I will say about the animation as well is I liked how it played with different effects depending on what it was doing. There was moments where it's like going through a shitty video camera and it looks mm. like a VHS tape. There's moments where it plays with like a, almost a predator style cloaking device with on like some characters. Yeah, and it and would you got play like the, the sheen sort of thing for it. Yeah. It was kind of like, as much as it is 2D animation, it is bringing in some very early sort of CGI-esque elements to do these effects. And I, yeah. I think that was working. It was working for me because it was adding to the whole cyberpunk feel to it. Yeah. You, know, like, you say how it was doing different things to emphasize the different you know styles. Mm. It was doing that with the sound as well, like with the, the voices in particular, mm. and depending on like whether it was a face-to-face, if it was a comms, or if it was you know the, the mental broadcasts. It was had like the, these very different feelings of, of the way they were uh, filtering the sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, as shocking as it may be, I actually like Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm not going to lie, I went into it not thinking I would, because yeah, yeah. past you, experiences... Yeah, he was kind of dreading this one. I was, I was kind of not looking forward to it, and the opening, I was like, oh, this is not bad. And you know... I, I, I was a little bit worried after the opening titles because you know, uh, like the guy from the ministry comes to talk to the head, uh, the chief from Section 9, and they're on the elevator, and it felt like they, sp- they spouted a lot of exposition really quickly, and the subtitles were going pretty fast, and I was like, oh, jeez, am I going to struggle with this? Like, Am I taking yeah. in too much? Luckily, it wasn't actually that bad once it got going. It was yeah, it slows down and lets you digest it bit by bit, then yeah. as it becomes relevant. Yeah, uh, it was just, it felt like a lot at first. And it's the kind of thing where I probably wouldn't even think about that or worry about it if it was in English, but because it was because it was in subtitles and I was do- it was going through it so fast and I was starting to worry that it was going to be like this the whole way through and I'd have trouble uh, digesting the information. But luckily it was uh, 
from then on. And uh, one thing that I will also say that I, I typically, I very rarely say this about any animated film of any kind. Mm. Good action sequences. Fantastic action sequences. I, I, I usually find action is one of the main reasons why I'll look at a, a, like a DC animated film or something like that and I'll say, you know what, this would still be better in live action because action sequences in 2D animation are not typically that exciting. Yeah, it's really hard to give it the depth and fluidity and maintain that and, it, and keep it engaging. It's, it's, the, it's the momentum. It lacks, it lacks momentum, I feel. Yeah. Uh, whereas this actually had suspenseful action sequences where whether it was someone stalking someone else, whether it was just something cool, it it felt the most like like it was taking an action scene from a comic book. Because a comic book doesn't have momentum in the same way that film does, but it does have momentum in the way they lay things out. Yeah. Uh, so I think there was artistry in that as well. So. Yeah, I, I definitely think it played to its strengths in that sense, that the action scenes, it's not like these big epic battles. It's oh, like yeah. you say, that there's stalking and there's dodging and moving behind pillars and things like that. And it these things allow it to breathe and pause at the moments where it needs to so that it doesn't feel like it's just a blur, which it sometimes can with action and animation. Yeah, like, especially with superheroes, which is why I bring up the DC films, is whenever they try to have a big Superman moment, I'm like, this would just look better in live action. It would just feel better. It would just be more impressive. Yeah. Um, because it's almost like they're banking on Superman catching a car is being impressive, but it's animation. You can draw whatever the hell you want. I don't care. It's not, you know, it's not, mm. oh, I caught a car, a car. Like, you drew the yeah. car. It doesn't matter. But when I see that in live action, and as much as it is CG, probably, if it looks photo real, I'm like, oh, that looks like there's a guy holding a car. That's impressive. Yeah. So, like, you know, they almost bank on the wow factor that isn't there. Where, as you say, this plays to its strengths and does things that it knows it can achieve. I do wonder if that is in part. It's obviously it's adapted from a manga, so obviously yeah, true. It, it may be when they, when they were drawing the manga, they did the same sort of thing where because obviously like a comic, you know, it's just there. You got to play to the same sort of strength as animation in this sense. So because that's yeah. also, it's also true for a comic actually. Sometimes when it's just like armies fighting each other, like a comic can just be like, yeah, whatever. It's just lots of grunts. So I don't really. It's it's hard to unless you've got a, an absolutely stellar artist. It's really hard to sell that and make people care about that sort of just massive epic brawls yeah so no i i, I like that i i liked action sequences were good uh inventive in places uh art style again i'm not super fond of the pointy like faces and stuff in anime but the backgrounds were all really good the overall style and tone of the animation was good uh, mm. and the music was good and the story was also pretty good so I'm being really positive here. <laughs> this is way, way, yeah. way more positive than I expected yeah, it to yeah. be. I, I don't think you were expecting this, but <laughs> I, I, I like Ghost in the Shell. I, I, do you want to just give the spoiler warning before we start talking about any plot, so we can? Yeah, yeah, we might as well. So we can fire into probably it. delve in. Yeah, right. So full spoilers then from this point on for the 1995 Ghost in the Shell. I'm specifically saying that because I mean I. I like we're not going to talk about any like sequels or any of that sort of thing, like standalone complex or the other stuff that came out later. Mm. Uh, so, all right. Do you know what's you know funny about watching this just now, though? I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the new one now next week and recognizing. Like, are they going to just do it beat for beat? Like, is it going to be this is this scene from the original? This is this scene from the original? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because obviously, I've only seen one trailer, and the the moment that obviously stuck out in that trailer is in the, the jumping off the building. Oh no! Actually, that's not the bit I remember from the trailer. Is it not? Because that's the bit that stood out to me no. in every trailer that I've seen of it. Because even before that, the trailer came out, there was one of those like stupid ten-second teases oh, for the trailer. No, I never saw that. And it's the bit when it's like the water and she's invisible and she comes, she appears before she punches him, and right. that's in the, that was in that teaser. Yeah. So when that happened in this, and this is probably a sacrilege for fans of the original movie, but all I could picture in my head was Scarlett Johansson, which is a really weird thing, <laughs> given all the controversy about her casting. But when I watched yeah. this movie, I kept seeing Scarlett Johansson because she's the first thing I think of there when I think of this movie. That's me, me too, and I think it'll be. I'm actually really intrigued to see this movie now because, <laughs> like I said, that that's two major beats that that it's pulled for the trailer and obviously mm. they're cool visual moments so it makes sense for them to have those but i'm intrigued to see how much it does veer off or, or if it just does a, a really straight adaptation i can see it being a lot bit more drawn out especially in the second half because i do think this movie is oddly oh it's, it's a little bit odd in, in the way it's structured it doesn't really feel like a typical act one two three story no it doesn't it feels like a big act one to me yeah i can see what you mean 
because the way it just kind of it, it builds and it builds and i feel like it's still introducing stuff really late on in the film and then this stuff happens it, it almost was like a pilot for a tv show you mean yeah even after the ending of the of the movie it feels like oh there's another story waiting and obviously you could do it as a sequel or whatever however it comes about but it feels like that could almost just be act two yeah uh so plot plot so so major the main character as part of section nine which is a government ops sort of team section connor has chronic hiccups and he's holding them back if you're wondering what that that noise is i just yep. sometimes sometimes they're like it's like all right we need to acknowledge that you just made a noise and i'm just <laughs> pointing out for people who don't know he's got chronic hiccups there you go uh, so she's a part of section nine she's like their lead and she's a she's a robot she's not a person she is completely artificial yes and in this world that ghost in the shell inhibits uh like mods and upgrades and sort of deus ex style sort of like yeah uh, cybernetics cybernetics are, are normal like uh, most people have something in them they'll have some whether it's just augments their brain they'll have maybe a special arm or something but it's, it seems really normal but she is further most in that she is an entire fake yeah. body. Yeah, she, she's entirely fake. In fact, isn't her personality also fake? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it is. I, I'm pretty sure yeah. that's, that, oh, that, that leads into the point of the story. Yeah. Uh, and our sort of discovery and, you know, the whole idea of the ghost and the, and the well, I was going to say machine, but obviously shell as well. Yeah. Because uh, they, they talk about uh, ghosts a lot in this movie and it's very much the, almost the code of the personality. Like if they transfer another person into another shell, the ghost as the the soul, if you will. They really use the word soul. I think they, they mention it once, uh, actually, in the in the movie. But they, they really actually use it. Uh, while we're on the subject to actually the words that they're using, I, I did I read just a little bit of stuff after I watched it, just out of curiosity. More uh, than me. Uh, and one of the things that uh, I did mention, we, we both watched this in Japanese with English subs. Yes. And apparently the English dub actually kind of ruins some of the messaging in the film because it, it changes some dialogue that it shouldn't change. Mm. Um, for an example, which I think is an important one, uh, early on, uh, someone says, your, your system's playing up or something like that, and Major responds, it's my time of the month. Uh, yeah. in, the, in the original language, and the subtitles right. that we watched it with. But the English dub replaces it, oh, it must be a faulty wire, is the line she, she hits back with. But that's mm. cl- clearly... It's that's, completely different. It's completely different, but it's also important just in the sense of the movie because the, the the reason why that that line works and is it's a joke is because she doesn't have that. Like she, she's she's a yeah, robot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and a big part of her character is wanting to feel things. It's wanting to be more human. So th- th- that taking that line away is actually kind of a big deal. It's like no, that. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad we watched this with the the subtitles and. Yeah, so th- I mean that's properly poking. That's the, that's probably the first hint of her character actually and what she's like desiring and wanting to yeah is that joke about having a period mm. uh so yeah uh but yeah so so she she's this up she she has like a special suit that lets her go sort of predator style camouflage you know thermal imaging i think they they talk about see is it a suit or is that just her body that can do it maybe it might just be her body because yeah, maybe... she always takes off the clothes yeah, maybe the technology in her body that does it. But I think, because there's the other guy who's yeah. got the hood, that's, and that's clearly that a, one is, yeah. a, an external like. Suit. Yeah, yeah, but with her, I think, because at first, I was uh, just before she jumps off the building and she takes off all her clothes, I was like, this is weird. I was like, is this one of those, just this, this, this just being a weird anime thing? But then, obviously, she cloaks as she falls, so I got the impression was the clothes wouldn't have cloaked with her because those ones weren't it. Oh, yeah, of course. So that that's why. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the intro, and we so we're interested in them, and we find out there's a there's some sort of criminal hacker going on, someone hacking ghosts and making people essentially act as their puppets. Hence the name that they're giving is the Puppet Master, this villain yes. who's hacking into stuff. And the movie's kind of about the hunt for this person, and the there's a good, great early action scene where they're, they're tracking these uh, garbage uh, drivers because mm. one of them is being. Uh, puppied and that his memories have been replaced with these fake memories of a wife and a kid and it's yeah. forcing him to act out because he thinks he's being blackmailed to do all this this stuff and hacking on his route and we get some, we get some good chase sequences we get, we get to the the aforementioned uh, guy in the invisibility cloak who's like oh. running away and he shoots a bunch of people they chase him through a market and we get that excellent stuff when he's out in the water and she cloaks when he can't cloak anymore and she like sneaks up and I love yeah, how it does it. Stuff. Obviously, you just see the ripples every so often. It's very yeah. cleverly done, and you you see exactly what direction is is she's moving in. 
but you can see that you know he he doesn't notice it. It's it's very inventive and it it, it looks really cool. Yeah. Um, and you occasionally occasionally see a shadow as well. Yeah, it's a fantastic so- case of less is more because obviously in terms of animating, they don't have to draw an entire person; they're just drawing a shadow or some ripples. But it really creates an atmosphere with it. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so that that, that kind of leads, and it all kind of uh, boils up, and we get some stuff with her, and we we find out that she goes swimming, she goes deep sea diving essentially by herself, and she's not really supposed to do that because there's a risk that it could mess with her systems if the water you know gets in, she goes too deep, that kind of thing, and her sort of main partner, uh, uh, Bato, I think, or Beto, I'm gonna call him Beto, Bato, 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 it's definitely <laughs> a ba, ba, not okay. a. Okay, Bato. We're going Bato. Right, this is the problem with foreign languages. We don't know how to pronounce things. Sure, but so he 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 questions her when she comes up, and he's like, "Why why do you do this?" Like, yeah, we've we've done training in the pool and stuff, but why do? You do? And she basically talks about how, uh, like, she she actually gets to essentially feel something when she's down there because there is a risk of death. Like, yeah, she doesn't the... not normally feel that because she's a robot. Yeah, it's the 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 isolation as well that's yeah. down there. That she's yeah. cut off from everyone else. But she even says that she doesn't only feel fear when she's down there. She feels hope. She feels like different things that she doesn't normally feel because she is completely it's, alone. It's the idea that with feeling so close to death, it makes her aware that she is alive. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, and that's kind of the biggest thing in the movie. Uh, and where it gets to, because essentially we get this, this robot that uh, shows up randomly, gets hit by a truck. And mm-hmm. Section 9 take it in, and it seems that a factory on its own, built this robot. And no yeah. one ordered it to. And we actually find out Section 6 so up, and Section 6 are the uh, like the ministry, and basically it turns out that they created the Puppet Master to do things for them, but the Puppet Master became sentient and started to do things for itself and try to get out. And it built this body so that it could sneak out, because it couldn't sneak out through like, the network or whatever, because they would see that, they would monitor it, they would catch him. Yeah. I say him, I mean, there's not really a gender in that yeah. sense but it built a body put itself in the body so it could be taken out and section 9 found this and they want to like destroy it uh, section 6 actually end up showing up and like kidnapping it and running out with it they've got operatives that yeah. come in and take it uh, but Major wants to actually dive into its mind she wants to hook up to it and dive in because she's like curious about it she wants to know what's going through its head why it does what it does why, why it's doing everything it's doing uh, and again we get more great action sequences this is actually the point in the movie where we get a really cool uh, sort of music montage where the music just starts playing and she's on the hel- helicopter and it's going mm. through the city and it's just all very very atmospheric and it's great and that leads to some great action sequences because when she finds the, the body's in a car that has an invisible tank over the top of it and the tank starts shooting her and even though uh, Bato's like on the comms he's like what are you doing you, you don't have the weaponry to take that thing down what are you yeah, doing yeah because he asks her what she's got and she goes oh these two things he's like yeah. what earth are you playing at yeah uh, of course when he shows up with a big giant cannon thing that destroys it he's like it's funny when this tank thing shows up I was like oh I was waiting for a tank thing because the the one no- knowledge I have of Ghost in the Shell prior to watching this movie was a demo for the PS1 game that was on a demo disc in the 90s. <laughs> and the only thing I remember about that game is that you controlled one of these tanks. I miss demo discs. <laughs> but that's all I remember. So when this thing showed up, I was like, ah, this was the thing. It was a demo. <laughs> I remember this. Uh, but no, this was great. This is one of the other great action sequences we talked about where she's like du- ducking and diving and dodging between pillars and there's good momentum to it. There's good uh, tension and she's yeah. trying to dodge things. And she's This is my it. favourite bit uh, in terms of action sequences because yeah. it feels like it's a tank and she's just running around and she's waiting for it to run out of ammo and just leading it and leading it and going, look, I've just got to, I've just got to wait it out. But obviously a cover's running out as it shoots. And it's funny, I think obviously she's determined to get to get to the puppet master. She wants to connect to it, but you don't really get, you know, really get a grasp of how much she wants this or how much she needs this until she tries to rip off, open the top of the tank with her arms. But, and despite the fact that she's strong because she's a robot, her arms just rip off. She pulls yeah. so hard that she rips her own arms out. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's really kind of brutal. Even if it is just a, a robotic arms, you but, feel well, the the passion in, in, in what she's yeah. doing. Oh yeah, there's great passion in it, but you also, it's got that visual where even though it's robotic, there's still some like real elements in there. Like It looks like actual tendons. It's like yeah, wires. Yeah, you can see the, the, the muscles tensing. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's muscles mixed with wires and then like presumably like a fake bow and like, you can see all the different parts of it yeah. and it, you really feel it. Uh, and the, this is kind of why I say it's like a weird structured movie because it all builds up to this this sort of element where I think in most movies I'd feel like I'm or, or only like halfway through at this point. And mm. she she links up with the the puppet master and the puppet master like basically explains why he's been doing what he's doing and what what he's and he talks about a lot of, a lot of the same things that she's been kind of feeling and talking about about how oh like I, I'm not we're not really alive like what is life if we can and he talks about how he wants to merge with her because what is life if we can't mix and then create something new if we can't die then we're not really alive it, it's ultimately what is life without legacy yeah like, and it, yeah because one of the most poignant things i think he says is sure i can copy myself but a copy is just a copy it's just yeah. identical there's no evolution there's no there's no actual sort of passing of life kind of thing uh and that's really what the movie's about it's about these two artificial uh intelligences realizing this and wanting to merge to create something new even if it isn't a traditional child in the way that we would think of it because it's something because you don't erase the parents when you have a child you, yeah. whereas in this case they want to merge so they create a new thing that takes the experiences of both and it becomes neither and something else entirely yeah uh, and it is it's a pretty cool philosophical idea, but he basically just like dumps this information on you at the end, like in this scene. Yeah, it's right at the end of the movie, and and it's like, okay, this is what we've been building up to. This is this is what she's been looking for. This whole thing, and and you realize this is the end of her journey. Yeah, uh, it, but it gives the movie an odd structure in that sense. Where I, I I don't think I was ready for it to end when it we got to this. No, I think that's pretty. Point. The the worst thing about the movie for me is this. It completely throws you. You're like, oh, this is the end. Like that, that tank. That, that's like the the final fight. That's this. That's what it's all been building to. It doesn't feel like that when you get there. No, it doesn't. It feels like uh, maybe maybe the end of Act Two at most. Like uh, like yeah. you know that that you typically have uh, your fight there, but it completely throws you. No, I I think what it maybe could have done is it, we could have got more of a hint from the puppet master what it wanted. Not not complete complete amount, but a hint enough that. We really fought for Major to get to it, and that would yeah, maybe. Yeah, because obviously, when when he gets there, when we get there in the talking, um, the Pope Master he says to her that he's been looking for her. That's why he came to Section Nine for her. Yeah, like he was aware of her existence, and it would have been nice to maybe get some hint, more hints of that from from that side of or, things, or maybe even just that that on its own. Like if if she got enough to know, I'm here for you before he got kidnapped, and then it became about the hunt of getting to him. Mm. Uh, that could have been because I think before that, before we we get to that, it really is does feel like the puppet master is this villain that they want to capture. Now we find out obviously Section Six built it, and there's a bit of a conspiracy thing going on, uh, and obviously that adds into maybe the themes of you know corruption of life and like trying to for them yeah. to use it and not let it evolve and stunting its growth and I things think it's have very, to evolve and change. Very noticeable that it's the the government that that's kind of in control of this, that's holding things back. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a very. Yeah. Actually, it was I was I was just reading up some various things after after I watched it, and one one of the interesting things I read, and this is kind of about Japanese fiction in general, is and this is a, definitely a flip from Western mm. fiction, I think, is the reason why that there's so many female protagonists in Japanese media and like in the you know movies or anime or yeah. whatever, is because, and I, I knew this part that the like the, the Japanese have this very harsh like businessman culture and that's why the suicide rate so high in japan actually compared to other uh, like yeah. developed worlds is because they are so like determined to be good businessman they, they work they overwork themselves they take their careers so yeah. seriously and the reason why a lot of their main characters are female is because the, their audience not, not obviously there's a lot of female audience in japan as well but their male audience sees that as like a, a fantasy as an escape because they don't see the females as having as much stress as they do, mm, because they're, they're so driven with their, their work. And I, I mean, how true this is, I'm not entirely sure, but from what I, it sounded feasible from what I was reading. Yeah, um, and I think that's especially interesting then, given that the Major is so driven and so yeah. s- stress-ridden that she's, even though she's meant to be this fantasy escape in this sense, she's still telling the exact same things that they have to go through. Yeah. And it's and that's why I think that, that line about the, uh, the you know, I'm, it's my time in the month at the start, Mm. Uh, is is quite notable because when you find out at the end of the movie, essentially what her and the puppet master do is make a child. 
yeah you know it's, it's, a, it's about that cycle of life and menstruating is a part of that cycle of life and it's kind of like she makes a joke about something female when she's not really female really She's a she's robot. Not. She, she feels female, but she, she, she isn't. She looks female. Like they, they gave her the shape of a female, but that doesn't really make her female. Yeah, it, but she clearly identifies as female, yeah. which is I think that's very important that it tells you that there that just because she looks like one, it, it's it's that she feels like one as well with that joke. Yeah, uh, and I think I think that's interesting. It, it's and I think you have like you have Bato who is this friend character who does help her and he does like because at the end of the movie after after they merge like section six don't want any evidence of this of getting out they want to like destroy the evidence and they, they try and blow them up and he oh. manages to save her uh and put but we'll save her mind at least and puts it in a new body we, we, yeah. we get her in a little girl's body at the end of the end of the mm. movie and she's like yeah i'm, I'm gonna go and you you know I'll, I'll come back one day like you know I'll, you know, I'm always there to help you if need be, but I'm I'm not really a major anymore. You know, I'm 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 neither and both at the same time. Yeah, because um, Patel asks her, "Is the puppet master still in you?" And her response is, well, "No, but but neither is is major." Yeah, uh, and it's it's about evolution. It's about the about about obviously life, and as we say, the the, the soul. What 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 does it mean to be alive? Yeah. Uh, and all that kind of stuff and it, it, that's what makes it good science fiction it's just yeah. it's exploring these ideas and doing it in a cyberpunk setting gives it all these opportunities to explore it in ways that we qu- yeah. can't quite I, I also think at. it was fantastically ahead of its time obviously this was over 20 years ago and it's the the the, the ideas that it's tackling with of the, the technological side of things of uploading data and becoming who we are th- on the internet you know how it's the sort of thing where we put so much data of onto facebook that you can almost recreate a person yeah where that, that's we're edging you know that that's the sort of thing that it's edging towards and the fact that it's aware of that future you know that far long ago is, is quite impressive and even the idea that you you can like change someone obviously you can't literally take someone's memories and implant new ones but the idea that you could completely like hack someone's facebook profile and completely change so that for someone else's point of view if they like stumble onto it oh this guy's got a wife and a kid and it got this and got that and it's like, no, it's all fake. B- yeah. bunch, bunch of photoshopped images that aren't exactly. actually real. Like you could do that kind of thing if you yeah. put your mind to it. So, uh, no. Uh, but yeah, it's, I, I think it's. I think it's got oodles of atmosphere. I think it's got a really good philosophical debate going on. I think Mage was a really interesting character because she's not a typical robot discovering life. Like she's already kind of there at the start of the movie. She's already yeah, she, questioning she's, things. She's already think she believes she has life, uh, but then she's having self doubt about it. That that's kind of it, isn't it? She's like, I am alive, but but am I? It's like, what if I'm not? Yeah, uh, and it's like she wants to prove that she's alive, which is why she goes diving. She wants to feel it. She wants to know that there's a danger of death because without that, yeah. you know. Uh, so I guess the question is: Is someone who's immortal really alive? <laughs> I suppose the obvious answer is yes, but <laughs> but philosophically, yeah. are they yeah. alive? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Philosophically, it's, it's not just alive in the sense of one person. It's alive in the grand scheme of evolution and and life as part of the planet. Is can you contribute to life if you can't be be a part of a, a future? And it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical child in that sense, but you have to leave a, a, a something, a, a legacy, something that you imprint upon the world and pass, oh, yeah, pass yeah. on. Yeah, creating something like she she could create art if she wanted to. She could create, yeah, whatever. Like you know, an invention. She could contribute in some way, and yeah. if not, so I almost wonder like what would be the adventures of this little hybrid that we get at the end, like post this. Like, mm. does that then want to feel like it's created something and and do something else? That does it have to go along the same journey? It ultimately, what's it? What's it potentially like? It grows up as because uh, this is essentially a new person. So once it experiences a lifetime, does then it feel like it has to pass itself on, create its own legacy, and, and you know complete the cycle? Yeah, because I've, I've I've heard people say before uh, that the meaning of life is to continue. You know, so yeah. to to procreate is is what the meaning of life is. I I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, but going along with that idea, that's kind of what's happening here. Like the idea of 
uh, passing it down and mm. ever changing. So, uh, but no, uh, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I did as well, quite a lot. So there you go. Uh, I am deeply curious now as to what the new film is going to going to do with this. I am intrigued because I feel like there's a lot of good action sequences in the animated movie, and they could translate very well to live action. They could. Or they could completely mess it up with if you know if if the CG isn't up to standard, something like that. Like so obviously in the animation, you've got that's it. You, you, as long as you draw it well, that's not going to look any worse. Whereas here, it could look worse. To be fair, the visuals in the trailer were, were looking pretty good, so I'm not. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not super concerned about that. I'm wondering if they've rejiggered it to make it feel more like a traditional structure. Yeah, and I'm not necessarily sure that would be a negative. <laughs> not necessarily. I think if, if I'm going to criticise it, yeah, that would be the one thing I would criticise is that it kind of feels like the, the, this hunt for Puppet Master comes to this abrupt end once this robot comes into Section 9 because it feels like that's what the movie's about and we get these scenes like hunting it down and hunting the various people involved and whatnot and then it completely shifts and I'm wondering if there's maybe a more natural way to transition into that yeah yeah i know what you mean because and it does feel like you said earlier it just it builds and builds and builds and then it just it ends yeah it doesn't feel like it has the and that's not to say that i need a big action sequence at the end it's just it's the way it's structured and the way it dumps all of those ideas at the end i think major hearing that it's there for her before it gets kidnapped would maybe help that and then maybe draw out the the hunt for him a little bit more so it's not just one mm. scene till we get there uh, it was it was a long scene, but it was a, you know it was a extended chase scene essessentially uh, yeah. with uh, the others you know Bato and uh, Tokusa uh, chasing after the other ones. Mm. Uh, I, I, but... I really liked his character actually because obviously he he was very unreliant on the the cybernetics even to the point where he would use an old fashioned revolver because he's like nah this is safer it's more well, reliable. Well that was the thing wasn't it because uh, he talk, major talks to him early on when he's driving around in the van and. He's like, you know, why am I here? Like, and she she explains, oh, you're you're like a, a traditional cop, and we we got you because you're mostly still a human. Yeah, you've got a couple of small augmentations for better this, better that, but you're like ninety five plus percent human, yeah. and that means that you have more choice because a computer. To read into this, a computer will make choices purely based on logic, and that's not necessarily the, always the best yeah. thing, as sometimes you want someone to use their gut or you want someone to use their maybe more emotional response depend like uh, here's an example uh, for exa- for example let's say like i think this is the example to give an irobot actually but <laughs> I'll, I'll go with it so let's say you have a, a an adult and a child both in danger and you only have time to save one but the adult is logically the one that's easier to save there's a better chance of saving the adult from the crisis than the mm. child, but a human being would probably always go for the child because yeah. it's just... they're seen as defenseless and yeah. they've got more to offer in terms of longer life. Yeah, and that's that's very boiled down to basics, but I think yeah. that's that's kind of what what she's almost getting. That is the idea of the unpredictability, the, the the thinking with your you know thinking on the with curveballs and things like that, and not approaching something completely cold and mechanical. Yeah. Uh, so the idea that she even wants that, that she wants that on the team, is an interesting... Yeah, it's fascinating. It's like she's aware of her own limitations, and she's yeah. like, look, I know what I'm good at, but I don't, I don't know where I need help. It also it kind of goes against like typical like robot AI stories, because you know, typically you have your Skynet who's like, no, human human error is the problem with society. I'm going to nuke everything. <laughs> like, yeah. That's typically yeah. what it is. And I think that's why I like about it so much that he represents the 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 ordinary person that she wants to be. In that she she's like, I can be this. I can be that. I can just be a person, make normal choices. And Batou kind of represents someone who just doesn't think this hard about life. He's, he's you know he's he's, he's a very, very laid back, isn't he? Yeah, very laid back. Things just are what they are. And I'm a big tough dude. And he's he's not. I care about my friends. But he cares about his friends, and he he doesn't think about it like this. He's like, why aren't you just satisfied with? the way How things, things are. are yeah, yeah. Uh, so he he represents that and not understanding that so it's someone who, for he has to kind of learn or at least accept what's happening with her and what's going on so uh, yeah oh, uh, I, I think it's a, a really good science fiction film which 
One of which I should probably have watched years ago, but I didn't. Um, uh, but it had the anime stigma attached to it, it, it so did. you were like, no. It did, but hey-ho. Uh, I was getting into this thinking, oh, I'm, I might hate this and I might get hate for hating it. But luckily, we have come out and... I, I'm, I'm kind of torn on, on, on your feelings because it's really nice that you, you enjoyed it and we mm-hmm. had this discussion, but part of me was really looking forward to arguing with you on this one. <laughs> I was like, oh, if there's an argument coming up, this is where it's going to be. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Here's one thing I think the new movie will do. I think the new movie will make us more aware of the supporting characters. Like, you know, for example, the head of uh, Section 6, the Ministry, like, I feel like we'll have a better idea of who they are so that when it turns out they're behind what's going on, it'll mean more. Yeah, I think it might. Uh, I'm just I'm just thinking about what we'll see, because I, I definitely see it being longer. I think... I'd be very surprised if it's not, because this is only about, what, an hour 20? Yeah, hour 20, hour 30, something in, yeah. in there. And this is probably going to be closer to two hours, I'd assume. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really curious to see how it is. Uh, but there you go, that's Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add before we get to ratings? No, I think we covered it all. Yeah, okay. Uh, Ghost in the Shell, uh, of course, I think uh, ratings... What do I rate this? This is a, a weird one to rate mm. uh, for me specifically. What's your rating? Uh, I think I'm going to go with a, an 8.5. I liked that a lot, but the the structure thing kind of threw me that stops it getting any higher than that. Yeah, I think anybody can concur with that number. 8.5 seems like a good one to go with. I It's the sort of thing where maybe the structure won't be a problem on a repeat viewing because you know where it's going, so you're not feeling like it's building to something. Yeah, it's the, the expectations that throw yeah. you, isn't it? Because it really feels like you're hunting for the puppet master for the first half, and then it swerves, and it's not—that's not, it's, not even really a factor anymore. Once it just yeah. c- comes into your lap uh, halfway through, so it's kind of it's kind of weird in that sense. But uh, but that that would be the one major complaint is the the weird feeling structure and how it feels like it kind of just ends, even though everything in it's good. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, so 8.5, there you go. That's Ghost in the Shell. Let us know what you think of this in the comments below. Your chances are you're probably fans of it and you've seen it before if you've stumbled upon this video. Yeah. Uh, but let, let us know. Uh, let us know your your hopes are probably more accurate, your fears for the new film coming out. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.